To claim other animals and primates as part of us isn't taking a step back. On the contrary, it means embracing our origins without shame. To see what we are, we just have to observe ourselves closely. Never before have we known so much. This is the first generation that is completely aware of what we're doing. There are many behavior patterns in the tribe of the suit that seem inevitable. One of them is our blinding obsession with hierarchy and social prestige. Because we developed as a hunting ape in reduced communities of around a hundred members, it seems that the problem began when we went on to live in large cities surrounded by thousands of unknown fellow human beings, where primitive hunting expeditions became expeditions to go to work. What's more, male groups mix with female groups in companies. All of these are experiences for which we were not designed. In reduced primate groups, it seems easy for the dominating hierarchy to find its place and establish itself. But in a massive urban community, the situation is much more strained. Every day, the selfish ape is exposed to unwanted encounters with countless strangers. An unprecedented situation for any other primate species. It isn't possible to engage in a social hierarchy with all of them, which is why we use the so-called anti-contact bylaws that allow us to go through life without dominating or being dominated and clearly establishing who we are. We do so without realizing it, but it requires a great deal of effort on our part. There is an excess of stimulus. This is why we avoid eye contact, pointing and establishing direct body contact. This is why greeting practices have been ritualized. The handshake was adopted to enable slight contact while keeping a proper distance. Its origin seems to be this. Napoleon, this male dominant chimp, is quite nervous. To calm him, one of the females places her hand near the male's mouth. Bite me if you want to is what this gesture means. This calms him, as it is an example of submission, a friendly greeting, just like ours. The kiss on the cheek also comes from the primate act of sniffing each other in order to obtain information about a possible mate. We have rendered it devoid of all sexual content but we still do it in many parts of the world. But even when we were able to build dangerous weapons, we had to also develop so-called appeasement signals in order to create friendly links within the group. One of the most common signs of appeasement among our cousins involves a secondary individual cleaning and ridding a dominant of parasites in order to gain favor or protection. Removing parasites from places he cannot reach with his own hands. We started out doing exactly the same thing. But the ritual became ever more complicated. And because in a city we can't rid our boss of parasites in order to get a raise, we had to invent a substitute mechanism. What biologists call an invitation to social cleaning is what allows the weak animal to be present near the dominant one. He is allowed to stay thanks to the service he provides. It started out as an invitation through a click of the lips like chimps do. And scientists believe that in us, it first became what we call smiling and later evolved into language. The language of courtesy, that trivial banter over unimportant issues that does not inform us about anything nor transmits any real feeling, is the human version of the social cleaning of the rest of the primates. 
It only has one end, to gain favor and be accepted. One exception to this language of courtesy is the business meeting. In order to maximize time and not waste it in unnecessary social cleanings, formalities are exaggerated. Here, everyone already knows the hierarchy. Everyone knows who's the boss. It's not necessary to clean him. This verbal cleaning appears only briefly during the greeting and the farewell. Many of our most everyday gestures also have rather unsuspected origins. Any angry ape will try to intimidate others in its group by making its hair stand on end to seem larger and more menacing. We do the same thing, placing something on our head that will make us seem larger to the person before us. Male gorillas have an oversized crest to impress their rivals. Our military and police uniforms are based on the same principle. Tall headwear and shoulder pads make us fierce. All of this for the same reason. The selfish ape of the tribe of the suit must maintain its place in society and if possible, improve it. But they must do it cautiously without jeopardizing their cooperative contacts because we need to feel that we belong to a group that will protect us. This is where the system of signs of submission and of aggression or dominance come into play. Group collaboration requires a high degree of uniformity, both in terms of clothes and of behavior, but there is still a large margin for hierarchic competition. The suit and tie, our symbol, is the best example. Its presence or absence sends us messages. It must be present in business situations, but it could be of a brand name, or colored, loud, or serious, fashionable, or a classic. In social encounters, all of the selfish ape's fears are laid bare. It's easy to tell who the dominant individual is in a meeting just by observing them. They're the ones who don't eat, nor drink, nor scratch themselves, nor do anything compulsively. They're at ease. They make eye contact. They're the alpha male or female, and they know it. Everyone knows it. We're hungry for prestige. We're a tribe of competitive status seekers. We spend our whole life trying to climb the social ladder simply to impress others. The important thing is to not be less than our neighbors. This makes us permanently unsatisfied a condition that could be the key to our foreseeable and dark end as a species. We compete amongst ourselves, but who really wins? Nobel Prize winner Conrad Lorenz said that human civilization increasingly foments what he called the degenerative types. Is it possible that the tribe of the suit is favoring the failure of the best over the mediocre? Many scientists assure this, there is a strong tendency to try to destroy anyone who stands out. When a true genius arrives in our midst, he or she can be recognized because of one common behavior pattern. All mediocre members conspire against them. Dr. Gonzalez de Rivera has described this as AIM, Active Inoperative Mediocrity Syndrome, people whose objective it is to annihilate the advance of a brilliant person. If it's true that this is happening, everything makes sense. The tribe of the suit has inverted the natural order of things, changing natural selection, which prized the most prepared, for social selection, which gives power to the worst. 
We're out of control as a species. Maybe it'd be best to just let the planet go on without me. Or maybe I might be able to change. That's only a matter of time. A very little time. <laughs>